Hey, welcome to another episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. I'm an author of this book, The Non Tinfoil Guide to EMFs, one of the best rated books on the topic on the internet and worldwide, and also an advocate for safe technologies. And today I'm going to be <laughs> controversial stepping into uh, on the toes of a billionaire Elon Musk because someone sent me uh, this post on Facebook and told me Elon Musk was on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast and he told the world that EMFs uh, from your cell phone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, that type of electro pollution, if you will, it doesn't do anything to the human body. Let's hear what Elon Musk had to say on that show. I'm going to share my screen for a second and let's listen to what he had to say on the show. It's about a one minute, uh, one minute and a half clip. Okay, let's listen to that full screen. There you go. I mean, some people are like really worried about like cell phone towers, thinking they cause like radiation or something poisoning. This is not true. Yeah, people are worried about 5G, right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, not at all. I mean, no. Uh, like, let me put this way: like, if I had cell phones, if I had a helmet of cell phones, right? Strap around around my head <laughs> and around my nuts. I would not You're worry. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Phones are not, are not causing cancer. It's so there's no concern whatsoever with the radiation that's caused by those things. Uh, no, first of all, uh, when people say radiation, they're uh, there's just like they're conflating this uh, you know term from like nuclear you know bombs and w w like technically we are currently bathed in radiation right now. It's it's emitting photons at a frequency that are that that is. It's a, a, a frequency that can that is not going to cause DNA damage. You, you, if you had a helmet that was made of cell phones, you'd be fine. The, uh, the helmet again. So he said that two times. So the the gist of what Musk claims is that EMFs do nothing. If you have cell phones all around your head, kind of a helmet kind of thing. Imagine twenty cell phones doesn't do anything. Uh, no increase in cancer risks or symptoms or DNA breaks or oxidative damage or anything that I would claim happens. Same thing if you have it around your genitals. Uh, so no effect on sperm, no effect on fertility, no effect on nothing, right? So let's examine why Musk is g dangerously clueless about these things because in the end, this is a definitely not what science says and let me start by uh, sharing this episode if you want to listen to a deep dive about emfs and cancer this is episode 32 of the smart attack podcast and as always everything's going to be in the show notes or if you're listening to the youtube version is going to be right underneath the video in the description section so let me share my screen for a second and episode 32 was about will EMFs become a class one carcinogen? The answer is uh, it's likely yes, it will happen. In case you didn't know, so Musk is referring to radio frequency electromagnetic fields. That's your cell phone, that's your smart meters, the cell phone towers, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth gadget, anything wireless falls in that category. It, 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 it could also include uh, certain types of radio waves as well. But basically when he talks about 5G, we're talking about the fifth generation of cellular networks. So all this radiation is a class 2B carcinogen right possibly carcinogenic to humans and dates back this decision from uh, may 31st uh 2011 around 10 years ago as i'm publishing this the thing is that agent radio frequency was among the agents proposed for iarc which is the international agency for research on cancer to reassess with high priority that was in uh, two years ago. So basically, uh, that's uh, bas an, an article from The Lancet that says uh, there's a bunch of agents uh, that we think should be reclassified and that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a priority that we should reclassify it because there's new science. So what does the science say around it? Uh, and how could Musk really claim that uh, this radio frequency radiation is not a carcinogen when in reality, the indications we have on a scientific standpoint is that it's a possible carcinogen. Well, let's look at the science. Cancer Epidemiology Update, Miller, Morgan, uh, Udason, and uh, Dr. Davis from the Environmental Health Trust uh, 
they looked at the science that has been published since the 2011 decision and in their using the same criteria they say it should be upgraded to group one carcinogenic to humans they're not the only researchers saying that there's several epidemiologists who claim the same thing based on the same science we had in 2011 new studies that came out including the ntp study and a bunch more that i, I won't get into because this gets boring for the the non emf geek out there but the gist of it is in the last 10 years the evidence has only been reinforced so there you go we have a class 2b carcinogen to be upgraded in the future to 2a or 1 that's the reality of it so musk is completely wrong on this one let's look at the the science on sperm quality in cell phones current progress on the effect of mobile phone radiation on sperm quality updated systematic review doesn't get better than this 2000 uh it's uh, august 1st 2021 that it's going to be published in the journal so a little bit of advance here i can see that this is the gist of what the science is and basically they retrieve and screen studies published before december 2020 so this is fresh of the presses and they say well the gist of it is that there there's some human studies that do not support an association but then there's also uh, uh new center previous studies have extensively investigated and demonstrated the effects of mobile phone radiation on sperm so there you go we don't need more proof to say that there's something there we need further studies right they say well in some situations the effects are not clear and whatnot but still we should follow the precautionary principle if you act uh, if you ask the cleveland clinic summer 2010 wow 11 years ago right so they have four steps to boost male fertility naturally these are not conspiracy theorists whatever whatever very mainstream doctors and scientists antioxidant quit smoking stress number four is keep your cell phone out of your pants pocket who's doing that these days well mostly no one because no one is informed so they say that uh, studies conducted at Cleveland Clinic have shown that the radio frequency electromagnetic waves emitted by cell phone may increase oxidative stress, blah, blah, blah. May, right? But in case of a scientific doubt, this, the precautionary principle applies, which means we should reduce exposure. So again, Musk is completely wrong that nothing would happen if you tape 100 cell phones on your genitals. So... Then he claims that this radiation does not cause the any damage. That's an excerpt from my book, The non Full Guide to EMS. What you're seeing is the different frequencies on what's called the electromagnetic spectrum, EMS spectrum. So you have very low frequencies starting at zero hertz. You have uh, in very low frequency, you have power lines, for example, household electricity. And then you go up, you go up, you go up. You have radio frequency and microwaves. That's your wireless stuff that we're talking about. Around 1 gigahertz to 5G might go up to 90 gigahertz, but most of its use will be below or 60 gigahertz and below. So that's your non-ionizing type of electromagnetic fields, and this will be important in a second. Then you've got the ionizing radiation, which we know can directly break bonds between molecules and that's ionizing ionization and the process is a direct damage to dna so that's why we know that certain types of uv do it and we know that x-rays and gamma rays do it so when you go take an x-ray you have a maximum of x-rays that is considered safe to be taking in a given year for example or you have x-ray um uh, apparatus when i went to the dentist for example i had this this x-ray protective apron so that way i'm only getting exposed to my face where they're taking the photo of uh both sides of my face and the front and whatnot to see 
exactly the position of my teeth, but they don't want to expose the rest of my body. So the principle that is being applied there is the uh, the Alara principle, as low as reasonably achievable. And with nuclear radiation or with that type of ionizing radi radiation, that's a principle that is obvious. We should aim to minimize our exposure, Why, right? There could be benefits to these medical technologies and there could be detriments because if you have overexpose yourself, your body has a hard time coping with this stress. But this, then this idea comes that non-ionizing electromagnetic fields do nothing, but that's now a complete myth because even though we don't fully understand the mechanisms, we know that it it is becoming a carcinogen. So how could this be, right? Because it does not directly break DNA. Well, it can probably indirectly break DNA. So again, let's see what Musk said about that, is that no, it doesn't cause DNA breaks. Well, let's look at the Reflex project. The Reflex project was in 2004, 2001 to 2004 in Europe, and this is uh, a document that I'm going to share. This one is the original in in German uh, from uh, Prof. Dr. Med uh, Franz Adel Kofer, who's a top researcher on EMS. And basically, what happened is that the Reflex uh, project uh, looked at the exposure in vitro, so in um, basically in a tube of cells to uh, cell phone radiation. 24-hour continuous wave of cell phone radiation at an SAR 1.3. So basically, that's your average cell phone. And then they compared that with the DNA damage that could happen if you're exposed to the equivalent of 1,600 chest X-rays. That's a lot. That's way more than the average person would ever get in their lifetime. And what you see is a trail of DNA damage. That's called a comet assay. Right, and the person who developed the comet assay is also to uh, is also a scientist who claims that the DNA damage is happening, uh, and that there's no doubt in his mind that this is happening with cell phones. So just a little, little side note there. So the the cell phone is equivalent again, not in humans, not in animals, but in test tubes. So we just have to be fair here. However, what happened? is that these results were so controversial that uh, you had one researcher in particular called Alexander Lurchel, one of the best funded researchers on EMF, funded by industry and um, I don't know exactly all the funding sources, but he's very well funded and he said, this is fraudulent. So basically, he claimed that this is fabricated data, that this doesn't happen. The reflex report was a fluke, and it was uh, basically scientists trying to, um, to create fraud, create data out of nowhere. Well, well, just happened. February 8, a few months ago, the German court moved to silence relentless critics. So Alexander Lurchel was fined and, uh, and found to be responsible for false allegations. And basically, he had described the Vienna research as a bad joke and as an embarrassment, but without any substance to it. So basically, they found, okay, uh, there's no proof that your claims are true. And can RF break DNA? Well, it looks like, yes, it is genotoxic. Let's look at or are there other studies? Because I'm just citing one study. I could be cherry picking here, right? I could be just citing one study to try to um, prove my point here, right? Kind of mani manipulate. Well, genotoxic effects of radio frequency electromagnetic fields. That's 2009. Again, data from 12 years ago now. 101 publications at a time have had studied genotoxicity. So does electromagnetic fields radio frequency range? create DNA damage, right? Of these 49 study, uh, of these, of these 101, sorry, 49 reported genotoxic effect and 42 do not. So there you go. 49 reported genotoxic effect. That's the slight majority. 42 do not. However, as reported by Microwave News, the majority, the vast majority of those no effect studies are... Uh, funded by sources with conflicts of interest. The U.S. Air Force, the industry, and there's an entire report I can uh, link to here. 
So that's something to also take into consideration. Overall, if you look at industry-funded studies, they are way less likely to find effects. So just something to keep in mind. I would argue, personally, looking at the data, that's my assessment and the assessment of many scientists, that the vast majority of studies that are independent with no conflict of interest in the funding sources or minimizing this effect or adjusting for this effect, that the vast majority of these studies do show that there is DNA damage from this radiation. What could be the mechanism to explain that? Well, maybe it's because this low-intensity radiofrequency radiation creates oxidative stress because oxidative stress downstream could break DNA, right? So let's look at the data. Again, this is 2015, Yakimenko AL. Among 100 currently available peer-reviewed studies dealing with oxidative effects of that radiation we're talking about, cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 93 confirmed that it induces oxidative effects. Am I missing something? <laughs> it's 93% of studies at the time, six years ago, did show that, yes, it induces oxidative stress. So the next time, this is something you got to listen to, too, if you want to know about the 5G satellites and Elon Musk is launching these satellites saying, again, on, on a big show like Joe Rogan, one of the most watched uh health-related podcast in the world, right? Maybe the number one podcast in the world. So the next time you trust Elon Musk, to, with such a conflict of interest, he, had, he has invested millions, if not billions, in that SpaceX and launching these satellites and these uh, ideas, and also he's, he's behind Tesla, right? So Tesla uses different type of radio frequency EMFs and r different types of batteries and whatnot. So maybe he's, he's also... Uh, also uh, afraid of liability for his company. Who knows? He's not telling the truth. I think he's simply clueless about these effects, unfortunately. So yes, these EMFs could cause cancer. There's good indications of that, especially long-term and chronic use, very close to the body, like a cell phone in the ear, for example. Yes, EMFs probably induce problems in fertility in men, and women, if you look also at, on the data on women, doesn't look good. And yes, these EMFs cause DNA damage. And yes, they cause oxidative stress. So there you go. Elon Musk is wrong, and you should probably not listen to a billionaire uh, who has conflict of interest to tell you what the science is. So what can you do? Well, in the meantime, you should aim to reduce your exposure. Doesn't mean to go back to the Stone Age or anything like that. I have plenty of resources that I won't even mention again, my book and blah, 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 my website, to help you do that. My goal is to say, look, we have to stop putting our heads in the sand. These effects are real. They're here. And now we know it's an agent that is problematic. We need to either replace it with wired versions, safer technologies, if not safe technologies, or we need to eliminate it and reduce our time of use. So minimize your time of use, don't keep the cell phone in your pocket, create distance and all those things I've been just hammering and hammering and please share this video with Elon Musk and Elon, uh, no, <laughs> no offense, but you need to inform yourself and if you inform yourself about these biological effects, someone as intelligent as you and as resourceful could potentially create biocompatible signals or technologies that are way, way, way safer. Unfortunately, that pro that satellite project of yours, it's not a good idea the way it's being implemented right now. Thanks for listening. Please share it widely and see you next time.